Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first October meeting of SIG Contributor Experience. Um, I'm your host, Bob Killen, one of the chairs. As a general reminder, we abide by the CNCF Code of Conduct, which essentially boils down to please be excellent to each other. Um, with that, uh, does anyone want to potentially help with notes? Otherwise, we can just do multiplayer. Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah. Hold on. Let me bring up. Let me make sure they're not freezing on me. And if not, I can do notes. I don't expect this to be a terribly long meeting. Looks okay. Okay. Um, then let's kick right into it uh with events uh nigel do you have a contributor summit update yeah the update is just that things are going pretty smoothly um we've got done pretty much everything that we need to do as we're getting closer um the sheet is up now for ops if you are looking for volunteer opportunities um i'll grab a link for that but yeah things are moving right along um the social venues picked out figuring out activities that'll happen there for that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite chuffed with how things are going, frankly. I think, I think we're, we're moving yeah. right along. Do you know what I, the attendance is right now? Um, let me grab the sheet. Okay. Uh, yeah, we didn't have a meeting well, this week because of the U S holiday. Yeah. So. The holiday uh, we did async, but the last update that we had, had the total reg at one forty. Okay. Yeah. I suspect we'll get the, you know, um, another another bunch of people towards the end yeah. of it. Yeah. I need I need to follow up with uh no, I don't need to follow up with in Slack about some about the social, but Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah. So Okay. Um anything else? Summit related. Anyone have any questions, comments, concerns? Yeah, the schedule's not, up. Oh. Sorry, not concerned. I just, uh, I just learned that I'm actually going to be able to come, and so I just want to raise my hand to see where I can up, 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 help up, best. Up. Yeah. Um, we, yeah, the biggest thing right now is like making sure that day of we have things like folks helping out with the rooms for ops. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll see. I think that most of the areas are, are covered for now. A lot of things are winding down, like awards is all they figured out their stuff. They're like getting that handled, um, comms kind of chilling. Yeah. Um, I might check in with Laura, maybe there's like perhaps some support that's needed for the, um, meet the Kubernetes contributors community um i think natalie's still looking for volunteers too yeah 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 that's what i was saying ops, ops oh, beginning. sorry all good <laughs> um yeah yeah is it best if i just sort of raise my hand in the summit channel yeah i think that would be good summit um staff. and then maybe yeah maybe tag uh natalie or laura because i know they they probably would appreciate some support um yeah okay thanks yeah no problem cool um i guess moving right along to mentoring i don't think anyone mm -hmm. has any updates here so i will uh to put our contributor comms which i do, we don't have castlin she's on vacation and without a laptop so like good good on her <laughs> oh. um and uh and let's see chris on the line so i think we will skip over that to uh contributor docs um craig i do not have an update for you yet that's been on me i've just been busy <laughs> I understand. Uh, any way I can 
help. I, you know, one of the things I'm interested in learning is a little bit about the cost concern and uh, making sure that there isn't some misunderstanding about how the cost, you know, the cost actually works. Yeah, the uh, the the cost concern was us like hosting in the image itself in our, you know, basically our our preferred way of hosting images, which is, you know. It's distributed to, you know, Amazon and Google, but it's not distributed to, you know, Microsoft because they aren't, you know, in it yet. So anyone that's using it, there'd be the cost of pulling that image down for anyone running the that uh, environment. Um, one thing that Ben wanted to try, um, and he hasn't had time, and like this is the thing I like I was going to do is um, theoretically um, I forget the script, but it can be run and it will pull in all the dependencies at run to, like, you know, basically when you spin up and run that script. So what that would do is that it could potentially use a, you know, default image and run that script, it would slow startup time, but it would be up to date and without requiring a uh, um, a separate image. So that's, you don't need to do anything special to do that with the dev containers uh, as you do them in the uh, code spaces. So code spaces would essentially handle that for you automatically from the dev container definition. So that's kind of the fallback is to um, just require everybody to go through at least until we figure out how to do the image hosting and to optimize costs uh, would be to just push the dev container configuration so that it gets run every time you start a new environment. Yeah, that is probably going to be the path of least resistance at least to get something in there before KubeCon, um, just because, and you, you know, it, it's it's KubeCon time, so like everyone is just, you know, the, the, the there's a dozen things on the list, and they have time for four of them. <laughs> um, so like I'd say, let's let's at least try and and get that merged, um, at least as a starting point. Does that sound good? That sounds good to me. I mean, that's what I proposed last in the issue, and I haven't been happy to see if other people uh, agree. Um, can you in, in link the the issue? I will do that now. Yeah. Because I, I think if um, we use the default image, like there shouldn't be any blockers. We can just merge it. Is there, uh, while well, Craig's grabbing the link, is there any other things people want to discuss about that or other docs related things? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's pop over to, uh, Moderation and media. Yeah. Uh, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, um, I have something to say about Slack, but but go ahead and get started first. Hey, no, go ahead. Nigel. Go ahead. Oh, just um, I need to go through the sort of annual <laughs> weeding out of inactive Slack moderators and then trying to recruit new ones. Um, yeah. Yeah. I and, and I have not gotten to it. Too. I keep saying I'm gonna do it and not doing it. So I'm yeah. gonna set for the next time we have this meeting, it will be done. Okay. Um, yeah, everything's kind of taking over smoothly with YouTube. I actually haven't done YouTube in a few days. I had a conversation with Bob about figuring out if we can just like 
set it to just be more automated where there's not the manual step for YouTube mm -hmm. and just kind of removing that. And so I am in an exploratory phase of of that effort. Um, by exploratory phase, I mean that I plan to explore it soon. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I will hopefully get make some progress on that. Um, yeah, and have an update for you all uh, in a couple of weeks. Cool. And e even if it's like going into different folders to try and pick the playlist, that would solve, you know, um, that, that could potentially make things easy. That's true. That is very true. Yeah. Okay. It would. If we can set the playlist programmatically. Well, with right. Zapier. Yeah. Right. Right. And the only issue, it's not even an issue, it just means that there's going to be a lot more zaps because we need an individual zap for each, each uh, start and end. But if we combined them, uh, I don't need to hash this out vocally with you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about it and get back to you. Okay. Um, yeah. The um one. So one thing I just want to talk about for the whole moderation thing was, you know, we had this idea a year ago that we were going to have um, a a role in charge of moderation in general, um, and try to build a more sort of generalized moderation team. Um, but then um. Uh, Marky became unavailable. Um, is that something we want to try to do with somebody else if someone's interested? Sorry, what's the question? Um, having a general moderation team. Um, the um, and and this really has more to do with sort of you know community volunteer spirit than it does anything technical, um, because. Yeah. I, I mean, I do have to say, like, I can keep up with doing the moderation, but the whole have to do the moderation and keep the turnover going and recruit new people. And, like, I, I kind of understand why people don't stick around because it's kind of boring and there isn't um, any real socialization among the moderators. Um, the um, And I'm wondering if we want to pursue the whole generalized moderation team idea with maybe somebody new i mean do we have documented what we need like what like the role is the role like clearly outlined not not this like potentially new role Okay. Um, the actual like moderation stuff itself for different platforms. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I would be chill to help out, you know, with getting that moderation stuff going. Okay. Well, let's then that case, let's talk about it in the post KubeCon era because, um, yeah, the, um, because you're not taking on anything additional right now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. The um, um, yeah, it's just it's more when I look at it from this perspective is the bigger value to the thing we were talking about doing with Marky is just making moderation more of a a team, um, so that people, honestly, so that people would stick around because it was fun, um, and and not just yet one more thing you received alerts about, um, the um. And, um, you know, and, and handling the sort of, you know, general turnover thing, because it's always going to be the case, right? We're always going to need to be recruiting new moderators and, and having other moderators retire rather than putting it off until it reaches crisis proportions and then doing an, an abrupt blitz to try to replace the moderators, which is how we do it right now. Yeah, down to have this conversation. Okay. Okay. And can can also hash out more at KubeCon. Mm -hmm. oh, right, we could have an unconference session about moderation. Yeah, yeah. Why not? <laughs> Although we're running out of unconference slots, which is kind of yeah, of course, yeah. 
the um I, I would definitely save some uh for on site. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, well, anything else regarding uh moderation and media? Okay. Uh, GitHub management. I don't have any updates here, really. Um, we're still in the process of getting things set up for uh, the etcd org. But that's that's pretty much it. Okay. Um, elections? We had the we had retro. An election. Um, we had an election. We had a retro. I've had... Um... Um, do, do, do. Let me see if I can link the retro in there. Um, it it actually went pretty well. Um, I want to say, um, do, 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 do. I mean, from from my perspective, it actually went really well in that this is literally the first steering election that we've had that none of our original election officers were directly involved in running um and and it worked we had an election there were no major problems um so there were a lot of minor problems um and we'll continue to work on those but but like overall from a perspective of sustainability and and the elections doing what they're supposed to do it's um um it worked it worked yeah we're in pretty good shape we can hold we can hold another steering election with another team um, although obviously we want to recruit people who had previous teams. And, and actually, I was pleasantly surprised to find out that the election officer's handbook that I wrote was about 85% correct, um, which is, is higher than, than I was expecting. Um, so, I mean, I think Bridget, you know, built that out a little bit, um, but it's, um, it's been good. Um, I'm currently trying to, in the off season, um, I've had a couple people offer to help with the electo test infrastructure situation. Um, and so hopefully I'll be able to make some progress on that. Um, the, um, um, if you don't remember from our last time we discussed in the meeting, the problem is that electo has a long to do list of fixes and required features. And what we're up against right now is that we don't have good test coverage or any kind of real testing infrastructure for Electo, and that's has become a blocker to doing more work on it. Um, because it's it's too hard to know if we've broken something. The um, um, not that that discussion will be familiar to anybody from any other SIG. Um, the um, <laughs> but but that's how it is. But it's um, we'll continue using it. Um, I also need to pull others because we're having yet another project to use Electo. Um, um, Which project? Um, who are we getting set up now? I'm I'm blanking on on who it is. It's it's another project that just joined the CNCF. Okay. Is now going to have elections when they haven't had them before. Um, but I'm blanking on who it is. The um. I mean, it's the basic thing, right, is that um, I created Electo because there wasn't anything like it. Um, and people are continuing to use it um, uh, because there isn't, aren't, aren't really alternatives. Um, the alternatives involve doing a whole lot of manual data entry, um, you know, because there is stuff like, um, oh, and also the alternatives often require you to pay a fee per election. So... Um, and, and neither of those are keen. So, um, but we can continue using it, and, and I don't know if it's worth reminding SIGs, et cetera, that they can use Electo anytime they want to. I mean, the way we have it set up, all they have to do is create a folder in the community repo, and they can use it for SIG-based elections. I think the reason people have been doing that is that most SIGs don't actually have elections for things. So that's all for Electo. Um, 
I don't think there was anything major in the election other than that. Um, well, actually, there's one other thing. So here's the major thing in the election, which is um, we have this sort of steady long term decline in the number in the percentage of voters. As in each election, you know, maybe one to two percent fewer contributors vote. Um, and I, we've discussed some things to address that, but they're high effort things. Like, for example, something that's been on the to-do list for the election, um, the election officers, you know, rotating from one group to another forever has been having some sort of meet the candidates thing, um, which we think would boost interest in the election because they'd actually get to meet people. Uh, particularly one of the other things we saw with the election, which was not a surprise given the number of candidates, um, was the use of no opinion has grown. As in there, there are a lot more people who ranked one to three candidates and voted no opinion on the whole rest of them. And, and that has also been like an increase from election to election. And, and, um, the, um, and the obvious solution to that is to do some sort of meet the candidates event. It's just been or series of blog posts or something. It's just been the case that the election officers have never had the bandwidth to actually carry that out in any of the elections. So it's something to think about. Um, the um, What does no opinion do for candidate waiting? Does it just not appear in the waiting at all? It does not appear in the waiting at all. That's basically mm -hmm. it. Um, the um, because the way that Condorcet algorithms work is, your vote is apparent is actually a relative ranking. I like candidate X more than candidate Y. Um, and so, and then you basically add up all of those preferences, um, uh, using a mathematical formula, and um, then the algorithm picks the most preferred candidate. And so, a no opinion is a candidate that you don't have a preference on and they end up not going into the math. Um, and so, um, um, and that's a nice thing about Condorcet voting, right? Because for things like first past the post voting, you can't really have a, no opinion often is actually is a vote against somebody, right? Whereas, whereas for Condorcet, it really is genuinely neutral, um, which is a nice thing about it. But um, one of the problems, and I've seen this dealing with another project that I'm not going to name, is when the contributors feel out of touch with who's running, they tend to vote for their coworkers, um, which is not a good thing on the whole. It makes it a contest of employers, um, which which then gets very contentious. Um, and and that's not a direction we want to head in Kubernetes. So, um, so I'm thinking. Next year for election team and stuff, we might even want we might want to work with contributor comms to see if we can get an additional person assigned who's not an election officer, but specifically just works on meet the candidate stuff. Um, because unless somebody comes up with a better idea, that's the only way I can see to address this sort of declining involvement. Um, um, you know, that is, if people have this, if people have seen videos or read blog posts or whatever, then they'll have opinions on who to vote for, aside from, oh, hey, I work with this person. Um, and and we can maybe, you know, sort of turn around the trend. There shouldn't be anything preventing the committee from appointing a subcommittee, right? Um, I, I mean, I think we only need one person, but we need one person who's doing that and not doing other things. I think I think we've proven over the course of like two or three elections that asking the election officers to do it is going to result in it not getting done um, because they have too many other things to do. The um, um, the um, Okay, so put that in the notes. 
Uh, is there any other, you know, items for elections? Then we can hop over to uh, open items and uh, Noah, I'm assuming, well, yeah, your name's on the end there. <laughs> yeah. You want to mention it? Yeah, so um, we did a poll to get people to actually show up for a non-code meeting. Uh, the poll is closed. The meetings will be happening Tuesday mornings, Pacific time, mornings in quotes, because who knows where people are. Um, so yay, that's finally happening again. We got more than like two people to vote on a poll. We actually got critical mass of people who are interested in showing up. Um, that is happening sort of in conjunction with tag CS, but it's also, we're going to sort of tag team it with the SIG as well. So haven't had a chance to formally announce the results of the poll yet because I've been super busy, but right here, you hear it first here, SIG Contrib X, like, and subscribe. Smash okay. that bell. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we got. That's going to be happening. Uh, if I can manage to get together an announcement, it might happen as soon as next week. Okay. Cool. Ooh, okay. Well, speaking of time slots, do you you will not expect to see me showing up for that? Uh, Tuesday, Tuesday morning is, is like literally my worst time slot. Yeah, um, I'm I'm not happy about it, but it is what it is. Yeah. Well, no, and for most of your audience, it's not right in in it's not an issue. Like, I mean, one of the things that conflicts for me, obviously, is um, TOC meetings, but most of your audience is not attending TOC meetings, so. Unfortunately, the the other most requested time slot I now have a permanent conflict in since when I started the poll. Yep. So, yep. Whoops. Yeah. Yeah. That that um, eight a.m. Pacific is brutal for for those of us who are in the Pacific time zone. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, We're not not happy about it, but I will get up and do it and lead it because it needs to be done. Okay. Um, no. Well, I think that is it then. Does anyone else have anything they they want to discuss that is not on the agenda? Okay then. Um, I'll end it here. Uh, thanks for swinging by all. Mm -hmm. Sure, we'll see each other again before KubeCon. If not, see you there. Later. Okay. Bye.